Some people say you can't teach an old dog new tricks unless you're Dogcopter 3 in 3D. And why can't Dogcopter 1 and 2 be taught new tricks exactly? The fur hits the fan. The common use of that phrase is shit hitting the fan. So the fact that they snuck that little thing in that most children wouldn't understand is honestly really cool to me. No licorice in this shot. Then there is licorice in this shot. Then it's gone again. The gems are back. What reason would the gems have to pose here? Considering that Pearl is surprised that Connie is around, I don't think they knew that she was at the temple. And I have my doubts that Garnet put them up to it with her future vision shenanigans unless she just said to do it without any context. Why does Pearl cover her mouth like this in this shot? She doesn't really have a reason to. Connie promises this movie's even better than any magic. I did not say that. Connie would be good at everything wrong with. Also, am I the only one that thinks this camera angle looks really weird? Look at how tiny Connie's feet are here. Today, we're gonna travel in style. Why would they suddenly go from normal Steven eyes to crazed lunatic eyes? It just makes this look weird. Lion is sort of like a pet. He does his own thing most of the time, though. Don't all pets? I'd be more concerned if they didn't do their own thing most of the time. Hand. You think they'd teach her to watch where she swings? She almost just took Steven's eye out. Lion, I want you to take us to the movie. How do you expect him to know where the fuck the movie would be? That's like if I told a mostly wild animal to take me to the grocery. They aren't gonna know what the hell I'm talking about even if they do understand English. Why don't you tell me you can do these things you do? <laughs> Probably because A, he can't talk, and B, you never really asked. Also, this scene is phenomenal. The set piece, the reactions of all the background characters seeing this, the music, oh my god, the music. I wish more of season 1A was like this, instead of putting the focus on Steven being annoying a good 70% of the time. Although, why exactly did he choose to run out to the ocean in order to make a portal? Does he have to shoot a portal in the general direction of the place? Because he didn't have to when he and the gems went to the moon base in season 2. Maybe it's a bit unreasonable for me to keep pointing this out, but when you draw characters drenched like this, it always looks a little odd for them to be fully dry, not even 5 seconds later. Normally I'm all about this stuff, but this is not the movies. <sighs> what does that mean, Lion? What does that even mean? Hey, I think it likes you. I think that's possibly the worst way to describe what's happening. That's really stuck on good. Guess we'll have to chop it off. If that was supposed to be Connie saying that as a joke, that was delivered horribly. No! That looked more like Steven was screaming than it did him saying no. His mouth didn't even close at the end. Maybe if I do this. What exactly gave Connie any indication that this would work? I get that this is controlled based on Steven's emotions and or thoughts, but I fail to see why swords coming out after talking about chopping Steven's arm off would correlate to let's poke him to try and get more shit to happen. Also, why would pulling on Steven's cheeks activate the axes? Frankly, how would any of these actions aside from the sword, armor, and cannons actually be triggered by Steven? We sure don't get to see most of it. Why is this even here? Seriously, this penny has a grand total of two sentences on the Steven Universe wiki. That's how little of a purpose this serves. Does that mean it's worth more than a regular penny? That would make sense. And I want to see lots of explosions. <gasps> well, that's a forced conflict if I've ever seen one. Firstly, Steven said that he wanted to see explosions, not that he wanted to be attacked. So then why the fuck is this thing attacking them? Secondly, the only other purpose I could see this thing serving is as some kind of security system. But A, Steven has Rose's gem, so Steven shouldn't have any problems like this. B, do you really think that humans are gonna know anything about this place and how to even access the things in it? C, surely instead of murdering these supposed humans, you'd simply want to drive them out of the place instead. And D, if this is meant to repel gems, then honestly, this thing could probably be easily destroyed by even the weakest of the gems made for combat, so you fucked up on that front too. Thirdly, this thing is so forgettable even to the Crooniverse that it doesn't have a proper name. Seriously, the wiki calls it Robot Shooty Thing. Robot Shooty Thing. That should really say a lot on how much thought was put into this thing, and how much the Crooniverse really cared about making a conflict that actually made sense for this episode. What do we do? Ah! 
You should certainly do more than just standing there and yelling at it. Get us out of here, lion, please! <laughs> I find it just about impossible to believe that Lion not only knew where the movies were, but actually thought to go there in a situation like that. Also, Steven's hair wasn't burned in any of the previous shots, but now suddenly Lion just took a big munch out of it. One of the displays is blank in this shot when it's also supposed to say Dogcopter 3D. Why did Lion not think to show this to Steven earlier when he was clearly being attacked? Fuck Steven not asking, this is kind of life or death. Also, why does this sword come out of Lion's forehead when his pocket dimension is accessed from his mane? It came through! Thank you for your helpful input, Officer Obvious. What do I do with this? It's a sword. What do you think you do with it? Two kids and one lion to see Dogcopter. I guess we're just gonna forget about that whole let's just forget about it and I don't know why you hang out with me talk from earlier. Then what was the fucking point of having it in the episode? Do you have a rewards card? Why is she just going to let that lion into the theater? Where's the other people in the audience? Dollcopter strikes me as a pretty big franchise considering this is at least a trilogy. So not having anyone else watching this other than Steven and Connie is pretty odd. That's a nice little touch they add at the end there. 